Good afternoon. The uh, Wichita Historic Preservation Board meeting will come to order. I'd like to welcome all the board members, city planning staff, our city uh, legal representative, and our guests. At this time, I'd like for each of our guests to stand and introduce themselves. Thank you. This time we need to take a, uh, a roll call to determine whether we have a quorum. When I uh, call your name, please say uh, whether, uh, whether you're, you're representing this. Here. Here. Jen Janice said she would be absent today. She sent me an email. Present. Present. Bob, we can't hear you on the uh zoom meeting i don't this is claire willenberg and i am present for district six thanks claire we're having some audio problems yes and the mayor appointee uh, bruce valley so we have five of the seven members present constituting a quorum the agenda was provided to all board members via email on November 7. Uh, we have a couple of changes that we're gonna make. We plan to move uh, project 117 following uh, public comment by uh, Scott Downing. Um, and then I would like under unfinished business to have a status of the Old Town design guidelines uh, provided by staff. So with those changes, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Angle seconds. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda as modified. Unless there is an objection, the agenda will be approved as modified. Okay, I don't believe we have any correspondence. Uh, meeting minutes. The October 9 meeting minutes were also provided on November 7. Are there any changes to the minutes? Looks like we have Bruce. Uh, thanks for joining us. Angle moves to approve the minutes as presented. The minutes of uh, October Ninth. Willenberg seconds. It's been moved and se seconded to approve the October 9 meeting minutes. Uh, the minutes will be approved as published unless there's an objection. Thank you. Public comment, uh, Scott Downing. Scott, you have uh, five minutes. The Phillips gas station building, as you know, is located at 805 East Central. It resides with two other structures on the parcel known as 447 North Rock Island. The term historic significance is somewhat open to interpretation. The station building is the only one out of the three listed as historic, making it a standalone piece 
on a non-historic parcel. Neither of the two service bays are original to the station structure. The East Bay in particular is not constructed of like materials or aesthetic design in relationship to the rest of the building. With this considered, it should be exempt from interior standards of rehabilitation, making it eligible to be removed. The other two structures previously mentioned are neither attached to 805 East Central or listed as historic, making them eligible for demolition. In fairness, it is difficult to completely comprehend this proposal from these vague aerial photos without knowing these properties firsthand. Outside of Christina, has anyone visited this site in person? This has drug on now for over 18 months. There are four businesses that will need to relocate. It is impossible for us to move forward until we get this passed. This affects not only acquiring a location, but project scheduling and staffing as well. There is a date set for us to vacate these properties. The longer this takes, the least time we have to achieve our goals. I feel we can all agree the substation needs to happen. In most, comp in most cases, compromises need to happen to, make a, to complete a deal. This is no exception. The latest plan with a few possible adjustments could suffice the key historic elements as well as our need for the utility improvement. Thank you. Christina will now discuss uh, project HPC 2023-00117. So just from a legal standpoint, um, we have another couple here that's here for public comment. So do we take all of it at the same time? Okay, so we have to hear their public comment as well. Hello, uh, we're Chris and Samantha. We live at 1111 Bidding, and uh, we would like to build a garage on our property, and uh, we'd like to request a, was it? Design committee assistance to help us design a garage that suits the historical preservation requirements, but also fits our needs as well. Um, we have initially drawn up some plans uh, that didn't seem suiting for the property, and so we would love any help and assistance you can give us in designing something that works for us all. Thank you. So at this time, do we want to form a design review committee for 1111 North Bidding? Do we have any volunteers? I want to make sure I understand the process. Don't they file application with the planning committee? And at that time, wouldn't it be prudent to bring it to, to, the, uh, to this body? So this is in regards to HPC 2023-00129, which was initially withdrawn because I recommended denial. And so uh, at this time, they are requesting um, that a design review committee be formed in order to help them design a garage that can be approved. So I see Elena's raised her hand. Do we have any other volunteers? I think, Claire, would you like to? <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Elena. Yes, I'd be happy to. Then we need one more member. Bruce, would you be available? I I am really not comfortable with that kind of project because I, I I it's just not my particular area of expertise. It feels like you guys know a lot more about the residential stuff than I do. Christina, couldn't you, um, couldn't they just go by the reason that you denied it and change those things, which sounds fairly easy to do? Yeah, so my my concern is that, you know, they come forward with a design and then I either 
approve it or deny it. And then let's say that I recommend, or I'm sorry, I recommend approval or denial. And they come with another design and I recommend denial again. And it's a very long and drawn out process. And my understanding is that they want to get construction on this as soon as possible. So that's why I'm recommending a design review committee that they can get in touch with so that they can come up with a design that can be approved as early as next month, or that can be recommended for approval, I'm sorry, as early as next month. Christina, can you explain what goes on in a design review committee? Because I'm just not familiar with what happens there. So my understanding is that I would get the applicants in touch with uh, the members of the design review committee, and they would arrange a meeting with only three historic preservation board members to um, not have a quorum. And um, then they would come up with a design at that meeting, and then, then that design would get presented at the next historic preservation review board meeting. Is the main objection on their current application that was withdrawn for today, is the is the main change the size to a three car rather than a two car? So my the reason that I recommended denial for this particular garage was that the garage in width was wider than the original house. And then they submitted another design on uh, Thursday. And I said that it's too late to submit that design to the Historic Preservation Board members. So then I recommended that they get together and, for a design review committee. So we would have an updated design available for the design review committee, correct? They do have a design that they should, that I'm recommending that they present to the committee. Thank you. I'll be on the committee. Thank you, Janice. So the next steps is that I will provide you with their contact information and then we'll get a meeting together, hopefully sometime this month or early next month. Thank you guys. Okay, are we ready for the project? Uh, Paul, could you go to the slide for HPC 2023-00117? Thank you. The applicant is requesting to demolish portions of properties zoned LI, Limited Industrial District. The properties total 1.81 acres in size, and they're located north of East 3rd Street North, south of East Central Avenue, between North Mead Avenue and North Rock Island Avenue. The subject site is currently developed with an electrical substation, a small manufacturing facility at 433 North Rock Island Avenue that is not listed as historic. The Keep Clean building at 800 East 3rd Street North that you can see in the photo here. And an upholstery business originally constructed as Phillips 66 Station and Warehouse. The Keep Clean building has been listed on the Register of Historic Kansas Places since 2006 and the National Register of Historic Places since 2007. The Phillips 66 station has been on the Wichita Register of Historic Places since 1978. The applicant seeks to demolish a small manufacturing facility along with portions of the Keep Clean building and the Phillips 66 station properties for the expansion of the substation. The applicant's site plan, uh, could we go to the site plan from the, uh, in the slideshow please? Thank you. So the applicant site plan pr proposes preserving the south facade of the 1930 edition of the Keep Clean building, along with the two-story tower and the offices here, um, and the one-story offices on the southeast corner. However, it proposes significant amount of demolition. For the Keep Clean building, the applicant proposes to demolish the vaulted steel truss roof of the 1930 edition and the concrete block additions that give it its distinct L shape. For the, app, uh, for the Phillips 66 station, uh, the applicant proposes to, to demolish this small outbuilding here to the north um, uh, that were constructed at an, that was constructed at an unknown date and the uh, office building, which was constructed in, the, in 1927. Both outbuildings were constructed behind the original gas station. Um, I do wanna make a correction to my report um, the original Phillips 66 building along with the garage will be preserved. 
The following paragraphs are excerpts from the National Register of Historic Places nomination form for the Keep Clean Building. Keep Clean Building is an L-shaped building. The original 1929 brick building with sawtooth roof lies on the northwest corner of East 3rd Street and North Rock Island Avenue. The 1929 building includes a two-story tower on the southeast corner and one-story bay on the west side. A one-story 1930 addition with vaulted steel roof structure extends north from the original building. Concrete additions extend to the building's west. Windows, include, including clerestory windows and the sawtooth roof, are original industrial steel sash with operable hoppers to maximize ventilation. The 1930 edition features storefront windows. The Keep Clean building is an architectural interpretation of the towel supply industry and keep clean system. Extant original features include original steel windows, historic plaster walls, historic main entrance door, baseboards, and terrazzo floors. The Keep Clean building retains a high degree of architectural integrity and interprets its long history serving the Wichita so Towel Supply Company. The building is being nominated for its historical associations to industrial Wichita in the linen supply industry, as well as for its architectural significance as an industrial interpretation of the commercial style of architecture. Now let's go to the Wichita Register of Historic Places nomination form for the Phillips 66 station. Uh, this is literally all that they had in their form for this file. I looked at the file extensively. Uh, the brick cottage style building was constructed in 1927 as the first Phillips 66 station in the United States. Its front chimney, steeply pitched roof, and gables were copied in other stations built in that era of rapidly expanding automobile traffic. A little bit of case history. In 1978, the Phillips 66 station was nominated to the Wichita Register of Historic Places. In 2007, the Keep Clean Building was nominated to the Register of Historic Kansas Places in the National Register of Historic Places. And in 2022, the Wichita Historic Preservation Board approved the replacement of the front windows of the Phillips 66 station. That was HPC 2022 0056. And in 2023, the Wichita City Council approved a conditional use to expand the substation with the condition the site plan be reviewed and approved by the Wichita Historic Preservation Board with an appeal to City Council. So that was HP, or that was, sorry, CON 2023-00022. And they submitted another conditional use application, CON 23-00052, that includes a Phillips 66 property to the north. Uh, skipping ahead here, um, based on the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Real Rehabilitation, now this is for the Keep Clean Building. Staff recommends that the partial demolition of the Keep Clean Building be denied. So there are two ways you can go about this. You can say, uh, if you should you follow staff recommendation? Uh, the recommended motion, I move to find that the proposal does not meet the Secretary of the Inter Interior Standards for the Treatment of Historic Properties as reviewed in accordance with KSA 75-2724 and will damage or destroy any historically significant property or historic character defining features and, rec um, and do not recommend approval of the building permit associated with the work at 800 East 3rd Street North. Or you can say I move to not issue the certificate of appropriateness associated with the demolition permit. The proposed demolition does not meet standards two, four, and five, which are listed in your staff report. The proposed demolition will alter the distinctive L shape of the Keep Clean building, and will alter the character defining steel roof truss structure of the 1930 edition. In a conversation with the Deputy State Historic Preservation Officer for the Kansas Historical Society, the amount of demolition proposed by the applicant applicant may result in a properties delisting from the National Register of Historic Places and the Register of Historic Kansas Places. And correspondence to that is attached to the end of this report. So based upon the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, staff recommends that the partial demolition of the Phillips 66 station be denied. And you can use the same language as I mentioned before in uh, for the Keep Clean building. Now, I mentioned that the garage will not be demolished, or they're proposing not to demolish the garage additions, but they are still proposing to demolish the warehouse and outbuilding associated with the Phillips 66 station. And that's on the property and it's over 50% of the property. 
So should the board find that the partial demolitions meet the Secretary of the Interior standards, the following condition is re uh, recommended, that the demolitions shall occur subject to the site plan submitted by the applicant. Uh, let's go to the site photos, please, Paul. So this is looking north towards the Keep Clean building. Uh, this portion of the building will remain intact. Next slide, please. This is looking west towards the site. And again, this will remain intact. Next slide, please. This is looking west towards the site. Uh, the garages here, they there will be a facade there. Um, and then the barrel roof will be uh, they're proposing to demolish the barrel roof that's associated with those bays. Next slide, please. This is looking west towards the existing substation. Next slide, please. This is looking west again towards the existing substation. Next slide, please. This is looking west towards the um, the 433 North Rock Island Avenue, which is not listed as historic as the one on the left. And the one on the right is the warehouse associated with the Phillips 66 station that is on the property of the Phillips 66 station. And that is proposed, they're proposing to demolish um, that building at 447 North Rock Island. Next slide, please. This is looking west towards the Phillips 66 station. This will remain intact. Next slide, please. This is looking south towards the site. Next slide, please. This is looking east towards the site. These buildings uh, they are proposing to demolish. Next slide, please. This is looking east towards the existing substation. Next slide, please. And this is looking east towards the Keep Clean building. These portions they are proposing to demolish. Next slide, please. And this is looking east towards the Keep Clean building. The sawtooth roof here, uh, they are proposing to preserve. And with that, I will stand for questions. Can I go back to the slide that shows the front of the building? Sure. Paul, could we go to the slide that says looking north towards the site? Thank you. Towards the Phillips 66 station. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> This one, yes. So everything we see there will be preserved except for that white fence to the right. Is that right? My understanding is that they are removing the fence. Yes. The, the two garages will stay like you see it there. They will stay. Yes. Any I'm, questions a, or comments? I'm a little bit confused about this whole thing. Christina, you left us with recommended uh, motions, but you read them and then said there was something else we could say instead of. Now, which one do you want? Do you want us to do the motions that are in your in the documents, or do you want to tell us again what you want us to say? Uh, you can say the rec the recommended motion from staff is I move not to issue the certificate of appropriateness. Engel moves not to approve the appropriate certificate of appropriate certificate of, of appropriateness. Keep clean building or on the Phillips sixty six. So we actually need to make two separate motions. And we still need to hear from the applicant as well as any other public comment. We probably ought to hear from them first before we decide. They do have a PowerPoint presentation for us. Uh, can, can we hold it for public comment, please? Thank you. Applicant? Yeah. We'll hear from the applicant. <laughs> there you go. 
Good afternoon, Jessica Keck with Evergy, and I have a slideshow. I have no clue how to get it started, or you'd think I'd been here enough, I would know how to do this. Thank you. So um, Jessica Keck, Evergy, 818 South Kansas Avenue, to be Kansas. Um, been here several times, so this is our official uh, presentation. We've submitted the demo pit permit. Um, so as, as we, um, as a regulated utility, we have the obligation to serve 1.6 million customers within our area. And every project we study goes through a very rigorous review. This project's probably been reviewed for several years before we even get to this point. So there's a lot of behind the scenes before we even get here, a lot of um, working together and trying to talk, which is why we've been here probably four times since. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this is just a general how does how does electricity get to the to the customers and the substation which is the mead substation we're talking about today would then take it to a transmission line which are the taller poles that will um, then take it to a distribution line that takes it to the houses it's the distribution lines the smaller poles next slide please the project process like i said it's a very in-depth process we uh, start internally obviously to figure out what the need is behind it and then um, we reach out to the community as needed to also work uh, together to try to find a, a, a good solution for our process. Next slide, please. This is the area we're looking at. It's the mid, midtown, downtown Riverside uh, rebuild section. There's some work going on in this area and, and this substation is part of that project. Next slide, please. Uh, the proposed Mead substation, which is what we're talking about today, it's proposing to rebuild and expand the existing Mead substation on property located northwest of the North Rock, Rock Island Avenue and East 3rd Street North intersection. The properties adjacent to the north and south of the existing substation will need to be used for the expansion. Um, subject property is currently commercial and houses the existing substation and the uh, surrounding area is highly commercial, commercialized. And then the substation will be accessed from two entrances off of Mead Avenue and two from Rock Island Avenue. Next slide, please. Uh, the proposed actual substation itself, it was selected due to the proximity of the existing transmission lines that go into the existing substation. And it the new substation would improve the electrical grid um, reliability in the area and allow for future economic development opportunities. When selecting a site, we look at very a lot of variables, um, size of the property, location to the existing infrastructure, like is the transmission lines and distribution lines, impacts of surrounding residences and businesses, floodplains and wetlands, which isn't usually a, an issue inside the city limits, site topography, um, tree access, road access, and then a, a big one is having a willing seller as well. You know, we always have to have a willing seller and finding a site that meets all that criteria is, is extremely difficult and kind of time consuming, so. Next slide, please. This is just photos of the existing buildings, which Christina's already ran down most of them. I don't think you need to see them again. <laughs> Next slide, please. Uh, why is the Mead substation needed? Um, to strengthen electric, electrical reliability, the new modern substation is needed to meet growing community and regional needs for reliable electricity and replacing the aging infrastructure. Strengthening the power grid uh, for growing demand of energy in the area and changes to the electric uh, grid requires investments in an expansion of transmission lines and substations. And then prepare for development in the area. These investments lay the foundation for reliable, affordable, sustainable, and safe energy for customers and communities in the long term. Next slide, please. Um, consolidating infrastructure, expanding our Mead substation would allow us to consolidate infrastructure. An existing overhead transmission line currently runs through the Riverside, the historic Riverside neighborhood and a substation by allowing us to do this, the transmission line that currently runs through there and a substation at the intersection of Pine and Santa Fe Street would be allowed to be removed. Um, the equipment at Mead substation has reached the end of its service life and needs to be replaced. Rebuilding the substation ensures safe maintenance of the equipment. For downtown Wichita to be able to continue to grow and allow for economic development opportunities, a new transformer needs to be added to the substation. Um, this, this upgrade will reduce the risk of uh, um, voltage and reliability issues that would impact service to the area. And the expansion will add redundancy and resili resiliency, can't say that word, to eliminate a single point of failure the substation currently operates on. Next slide, please. 
This is the existing site and demolition plan that Christina has already shown you. Um, it's just not blued out, but it shows the buildings that are that we're proposing to remove um, with this project. Next slide, please. Um, this is the actual one that, that you saw. Um, this conceptual layout allows for full redundancy. Um, the safety re requirements do require us to be in the corner of the keep clean building, but we plan to utilize the existing building as a control house for the equipment. Next slide, please. The keep clean building itself, the building on the southeast corner is recognized as a historic building by the state um, and it's federal historic building. We propose to keep the main building the exterior facade and the garage portion shown below will be kept, but the garage interior will be removed. This will act as a wall to obstruct the, obstruct the view of the substation while keeping the historic rel relevance of the building intact. Next slide, please. The parts of the facility shown in red and orange were additions constructed after the main building shown in blue have been, in, have been used as storage areas. The concrete block, block corridor area, which lies between the primary building and the additions, which is shown in the green dashes, was previously used as a boiler and utility room for storage. The interiors and exterior, exteriors do not pose distinct architectural features of the add-on. Per the National Registry, this was for the 2007, I believe 2007 listing, where they're trying to do a, an upgrade. The concrete block additions will lie outside the scope of the current re rehabilitation project, the space has very few architectural details. The concrete block walls are exposed on the interior. Next slide, please. This is uh, just another picture. So it shows the, the green area, which are the two pictures at the top of the additional storage that those are the, the buildings we're planning to remove. And then the blue area is inside the Northeast garage area, which is where you see the garage doors on the outside. This is the interior. You can see the center block walls on the inside of it. Um, it's, it's a really open commercial looking space. Um, next slide, please. The keep clean interior use for post-construction. Primary building is going to remain intact. At the minimal modification to the interior of the sawtooth roof portion will be needed to support Evergy's substation equipment. The existing office space, including the travertine floors and the safe, and we mentioned the Christina mentioned the plaster earlier and the, and the baseboards, I believe, and the windows will not be uh, modified or removed as well. Next slide, please. Phillips 66 building, as we mentioned, um, it will not be impacted by construction. This building is gonna remain intact. Next slide, please. Consultation with the Historic Preservation Board. We've had extensive conversations. I think you guys might be sick of seeing me up here. Um, regarding the impacts to this building. The original application did include um, removal of a sawtooth roof. We, um, and this is part of the reason why the Phillips 66 building is included. Through consultation with you guys and coming back and, and talking several times, we uh, formulated a plan where we could actually keep the sawtooth roof and that required us to uh, purchase property or put an option on property to the north so we could expand the substation to the north and not take as much of the keep clean building um, as needed. So we're, we're trying to preserve as much as possible, but we're we're maxed out on what we can and can't preserve of that, of that space. Next slide, please. Um, we did look at the nearby lot uh, on the east side. It's it's not viable option. It was investigated. Um, Evergy would still need access to the 12 kV underground network on the west side of Mead Step substation. Uh, there's elect elect underground electric utilities along Rock Island that cannot be removed. The vacant parking lot um, is not wide enough. The north one, the north lot is not wide enough, and we would have to expand it and widen it is not an option. The parking area is a required lot for local businesses in the downtown area. So if we took that parking lot, I believe some of the, I believe that's um, required spaces for those businesses to operate. Next slide, please. Um, 17th tap, tap to Riverside to 69 KV rebuild without meat expansion. So if this expansion does not happen, if we can't per, uh, purchase the keep clean facility and expand, our only other option would be to utilize the existing 69 KV path through the historic Riverside neighborhood along Emporia Avenue, just north of 11th Street, shown in orange um, on the picture to the right. Um, 
We will need to install steel turning structures at the corner of 11th and Emporia and the corner of 11th and Topeka. Taller wooden structures would be used to rebuild through the Riverside neighborhood. Vegetation clearing would be required for the safe construction and operation in, of the rebuilt line. The existing line was built about 70 years ago. There are uh, more stringent standards, NESC compliance standards. So the line would have to meet those standards if we rebuilt it to that neighborhood, which would require um, some tree clearing. We would attempt to uh, design to a minimum foundation size on the poles at Ron Foundations. And we would get public input on preference on those poles of galvanized or weathered steel. And there's a picture of each at the bottom of this slide. So next slide, please. Uh, transmission line removal, if we can expand Mead substation, it would allow for the removal of transmission lines in the historic Riverside neighborhood along Emporia Avenue, just north of 11th Street. So it's shown in orange, those lines would be allowed to be removed. The existing wood poles, so I, when I say transmission lines, it's transmission line only. If there's distribution on them, likely the, the poles would be topped, would be shortened, and the, the lines at the top would be removed. The distribution line will remain to serve the customers. Next slide, please. Substation construction, as we have mentioned, it will be surrounded by a nine foot precast concrete wall um, while utilizing the existing facade of the Keep Clean building. The substation will feature security lighting that will be turned on and off as needed. And there will actually be a couple steel transmission poles within the substation because you have to get your transmission down into your equipment. Timing, about 2025 construction prep work, 25 to 26 substation construction, and then 27 will be the substation construction complete date. Next slide. Any questions? I have a few questions. I, I do appreciate all that more detail that we have today. And we really cannot consider, as we have talked before, uh, what happens in the lines from 17th to 11th along Emporia. But just again, for your clarification, you're going to the Riverside substation but all those transmission potential lines are in Midtown, not Riverside. So when you talk to the Midtowners, make sure you call it Midtown neighborhood, although it's a Riverside substation name in Midtown. Uh, just a little point. Uh, I do appreciate uh, more information on what is being left on the Keep Clean building. So there will be some kind of solid wall at the end of the sawtooth roof that on the north end of the key clean. Is that correct? So, I think she. So are you saying where the three sawtooth roofs are and where we take off? Right. And you're taking action. off the garages, but leaving the facade of the garages, but you're correct. taking off the interior. There will be a solid wall. We will have four solid walls on the Keep Clean building. Another yes. way of putting it. Yes. And you're uh, proposing to leave the inside basically intact, except removing probably partition walls for some transmission equipment. Is that what I heard? Yes. Cool. I'm glad you mentioned the safe. I thought that was pretty cool. How about the upstairs bathroom that was pretty original? There are no plans to take out the bathrooms. <laughs> All right, thank you. No uh, problem. And some of my questions are not for the board because once you take anything that does damage or destroy the historic integrity as listed in the nominations. So we are kind of stuck with that. But some of my questions or my questions are more as a concerned citizen and uh, what I may be speaking to our council members about. What is your plan for taking the transmission lines from the Mead substation to the Riverside? I know I have heard you're going north and then across on 11th. Can you give us more details? Name and 
Uh, Andrew Calvert, Evergy, uh, 1900 East Central. Uh, there's a transmission line about two blocks east of Mead substation. It runs from a substation that is basically just south of East High and goes up to 17th Street. Our intent is to tap that transmission structure, go into Mead, come back out of Mead, and go back to that transmission structure. But if this project goes ahead, you're no longer going, as I understand, no longer going 17th to 11th on Emporia, but you're cutting across somewhere to 11th. Is that correct? So if you're saying for on 11th Street, the intent is to, where it stops is to keep going east can across go, railroad tracks. Can we go back to the slide that says transmission line removal? That map might help some. Right it there. It was kind of vague. <laughs> Does this mouse have a cursor right here? I think I saw Christina using it. So the intent is that the current transmission line goes along 11th Street and goes north here. Instead of going north, our intent is to keep going east. And we're not sure yet, but we're to go back north to catch uh, the transmission to come back into 17th in this area right here. Okay, it looked like there were transmission lines on your site plan that were going both east and west on, would it be 3rd Street? On the south end of the site plan. Hold on. Of the keep clean building. I'm sorry. I appreciate <laughs> I got I got what you're doing up, up north. <laughs> it's gonna be the slide, I think it's slide seven. Is this the one you're referring to? Yes. And I'm looking at the blue lines or transmission. Is that correct? Correct. Are you specifically talking about this one right here? I'm sorry, the cursor, I'm on Zoom and it doesn't show up for me. I'm specifically asking about the east and the west legs on the very south on, end. So Bob, on Third Street going to the west is an actual, it's a 1960s underground transmission line that goes from our Mead substation to our plaza substation. That will go away, but this underground, it probably has no relevance here. Uh, where you see this line that goes from on Third Street to the east, that is actually the same route we're going to take to get back to Mead off that other right. transmission line. Okay. So why are you not going to, I may have misunderstood. It sounded like you said you're going to not use any more of the underground that goes to the plaza? Correct. It's actually an oil-filled uh, transmission line. Uh, the technology doesn't support no more. Um, we actually had a leak in there in the last seven years. Uh, luckily, we were able to contain it and get all the oil out, but having an oil-filled uh, line going through the downtown area is not our most ideal situation, so we want to get that out of our system. And also, we're not really an underground utility that can really support that line anymore, so we had to bring contractors in to take care of that line. That's too bad. I was going to hope you could revitalize that to current standards, go to Broadway, then go down Broadway with your overhead transmission to 11th and eliminate some of the Midtown historic area that you're still in t on 11th Street. I like that idea. <laughs> and you're telling me that's not possible either, correct? It is not, no. Okay. But thank you for clarifying that. I was curious where they were headed. I appreciate your your uh, support. And uh, I do have a question for Christina after everybody's finished, if there are more questions for you. I have a question. It's pretty important to me because in the past, it was always presented as unclear as to whether or not the additional concrete block buildings were included in the nomination or not. But it appears from the way it was presented that, that they were included not in the original, but in an update to the nomination. And was that accepted or is, was that proposed? How come that wasn't brought up earlier? Because that, that's quite 
that's quite important to me. If if it means none of those buildings are to be considered, then then I think you know you're certainly protecting the buildings that that need to be protected according to the nomination. So the concrete block, this is Christina here, the concrete block nominations were included in the original National Register of Historic Places nomination form when it was written in 2007. Does that answer your question? Well, it appeared in this presentation earlier that they were they were included, but it was stated that they weren't historic, that they didn't have, that they were not unique Slide or 14. historic. I think you're referring to slide 14. So I guess, yes, they're referred to, but they're specifically referred to as not uh, having, no, having no architectural significance, I believe. Correct. The space is, yeah. It says per national registry listing, the concrete block additions will lie outside of the scope of this current rehabilitation project and that that space has few architectural details, concrete block walls. So that, that to me really clarifies that that's, yeah, they refer to them, but they're not referring to them as something that really needs to be preserved. They're referring to them as something that is not particularly special at all. Am I reading that right? I mean, that's how it's stated in the nomination. That's correct. Okay. But Christina, do we still have to consider it part of the historic structure and is damaging and destroying the integrity? It is within the statement or the period of significance per the National Register listing. And per my conversation with the deputy Shippo, uh, Katrina Ringler, that this amount of demolition will result in the building's delisting. Thank you. Again, speaking just as a private citizen, and I think I would speak for many others in the room, I think what you're proposing is a great compromise. As a board member of Historic Preservation City of Wichita, I'm going to have to vote to deny. Any more questions for Evergy? Thank you. Public comment. You said you had a question, Scott? We have are you are you gonna speak, sir? Okay. Is this where I asked from or yeah. okay. okay? John Belford, Belford Electric Gate Entities third or the Keep Clean building. I own that property. It concerns me that all this discussion about what's going to happen or not going to happen. I have no say so in the matter, and I have a little issue with that, but that's another issue I'll deal with some another time. Seems to me that uh, we brought back a building that basically was about ready to fall down. And Evergy's reference to the architectural things, that are the historical significance, everything they want to get rid of is was um, blighted property. It's all concrete block. It doesn't match the storage area, uh, the north wall of the structure. It doesn't match any other block in the, in the entire building. The appendage to the west is the same thing. It's a concrete block wall, different era, different time. And it seems to me they're making every effort to preserve the main body of the building, which is, to me, the historic part of that building. And so I just, I, I am a little baffled at uh, why all the members want to decline their permit. So as a building owner, um, we resurrected that building. We've been stewards of it for the past close to 20 years. Uh, nobody loves it <clears throat> more than I do. And I would hate, and this is something early on that I discussed with Evergy, are you going to tear it down? Probably not. Are we going to go to condemnation? That's why they dealt with this on, a, on an option basis have been more than agreeable to work with us. And I think been more than agreeable to work with the historic board. And so uh, my public comment is simply that you should allow them to proceed with this matter. Thank you. Anybody have any questions of me? Okay, thank you. I would just say, if you haven't had a tour of that building, 
call John Belford and see if uh, there's a time. He's still there working. Uh, the business is still in operation. Go through that building. It is amazing what he has done. And as a public citizen, I think Evergy, I agree with John, Ever Evergy has done an amazing job of working with us, trying to keep the historic integrity. But unfortunately, our task is to say whether any of that building, including the concrete block without with very few architectural details, since it was part of the building when it was listed, my understanding is we have no choice but to deny, but the city council can override us. Is that correct? So if an applicant or if the board moves to not issue the certificate of appropriateness for either building, the applicant has seven days to write a letter to the city clerk filing an appeal to the Wichita City Council. And the city council does not have the same restrictions that the historic preservation board members have. So they have much more freedom in seeing how much of the historic integrity remains on both buildings. Are there any other questions or comments regarding this project? Christina, the you had referred to a barrel roof. Is that the area that would be demoed behind that wall is where the barrel roof is? The barrel roof they are proposing to demolish as part of their site plan. Okay, hearing no more questions or comments, we need a motion to approve. Excuse this. me, I don't, I don't see why he can't go ahead and make a comment because public comment was closed. For that, so I think we should let him do this. If a board member wishes to ask the gentleman a question, that's permissible at this time. What is your question? You have to go to the mic. Also, could you tell us who you are again? My name is Scott Downey and I own the 447 North Rock Island parcel at the other end of the block. The Philip 66 uh -huh. station area. Um, so my question would be to Christina, and that is, um, and we've talked about this, how the warehouse building or the 447 building is not listed as an historic building. It's just a station building. So I believe that should influence people's decision on how much of a story is being uh, proposed to take down on that parcel and and as it was represented um the station building is not going to be touched and so i just want to be clear that that warehouse building is not related in a historic means as far as being listed i think that's been we're, that's been brought up several times as we've discussed this over the last few meetings i, I know i for one am, am really clear on that scott okay well i, I just want to make sure Christina, if we let them demo what they want to demo, are these properties going to be taken off the list, historic list? So the uh, deputy state historic preservation officer said that she would write to the keeper of the National Register saying that the building would be delisted because of the amount of demolition that's happening to the Keep Clean building. As for the Phillips 66 station, it would be up to the historic preservation staff I would have to look into the details of this, but I'm pretty sure that I would have to determine that it would be removed from the Wichita Register of Historic Places. And is that mostly because of the percentage of property that they're going to be taken down? Is That's that correct. Okay.
I think we have a motion on the table, don't we? We need two separate motions, one for the Keep Clean building, one for the Phillips 66. All right. We can assume the first one that I made was for Keep Clean. Now for the Phillips 66 station, I also <laughs> we do one motion at a time, Elena. What? We should do one motion at a time. See if there's a second. Take the vote. Okay. And we'll do the second okay. motion. All right. All right. Uh, I move that we do not accept a demolition of the keep clean building. Is that we do That'll, not that's, accept that's fine. <laughs> Certificate of appropriateness. That's correct. Is there a second? This this motion means we're going to deny their permit. That's correct. <clears throat> So just to go off of Elena's motion here, um, let me just pull up the, the verbiage and you can you can confirm or deny. So you're moving not to issue the certificate of appro appropriateness and deny the demolition permit. because it will damage or destroy any historically significant property. Yes. That's my motion. If we have no second, the motion fails. Rich seconds. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to, to to approve the staff recommendation that is to deny application for the keep clean building. Can we do a roll call vote for this one? Oh, sorry. Thank okay, we're gonna do a roll call vote. When I call your name, please say yay or nay. Janice Rich. Nay. Do you say I want to make sure we're clear. Uh, an affirmative vote means that we concur with the staff recommendation, and that is to deny. Yeah. Robert Potter and I vote yay. Elena Engel. Yay. Gary Bond. Yay. Claire Willenberg. Yay. Bruce Raleigh. Yay. The motion carried. And that is to deny application for the Keep Clean building. That's correct. Okay, the second motion will involve the Phillips 66 building. Could you please make that motion, please? I move to find that the proposed does not meet the Secretary of Interior standards for the treatment of historic properties as reviewed in accordance with KSA 75-2724 and will damage or destroy any historically significant property or historic historic character defining features and recommended approval of the building permit associated with the work at 805 East Central Avenue. I need a second. Yeah. 
The staff remains, rem, recommends denial of the partial demolition of the Phillips 66 station, and that is part of my motion. Rich seconds. Question. Button. Since the demolition that is occurring on the Phillips site does not impact any of the Phillips station or garages. Of the I'm I'm not clear why they can't take two and although the one building is related, the other is not even related to the Phillips station. I tried to find the Wichita nomination. I could not find it. So I don't know how much of those auxiliary buildings were actually part of the listing. So the buildings are on the property, which makes it part of the Wichita Register of Historic Places, but they're not included in the nomination. I feel that gives us a little bit of a loophole. Do we have any other clarification to guide us? So that paragraph that I presented in the report is literally the only statement of significance associated with that Wichita Register of Historic Places nomination form. Okay. Can you switch the presentation to show just while we're discussing it, the the site plan for the Phillips 66? Because we're still looking at the page. Thank you. So the Phillips station itself in its entirety is remaining two auxiliary buildings which were not part of the official nomination, evidently, are being removed. That's correct. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the staff recommendation, and that is to deny application regarding the Phillips 66 building. Again, we will do a roll call. When I call your name, please say yay or nay. Janice Rich. Yay. <clears throat> Represent District 2, and my vote is nay. Elena Inkle. Yay. Gary Bond. Yay. Claire Willenberg. Nay. Bruce Riley. Nay. The yeas have it four to two. Three, right? Three. There were three nays. I show it was Gary Bond, Bruce Rowling. Oh, wait. You did the yay. You voted nay. Bruce Rowling voted nay. And Claire Willenberg voted nay. That puts a vote at 3-3. Three, three. Motion fails for lack of a requisite quorum. <clears throat> okay, so then there would be a motion to approve the certificate of appropriateness to issue the demolition permit for the Phillips 66 station property. Willenberg so moves. Rowley seconds.
It's been moved and seconded to issue a certificate of appropriateness for the Phillips 66 building. Again, we'll do a roll call. Janice Rich. Nay. Robert Potter, I vote yay. Elena Ingle. Nay. Gary Bond. Yay. Claire Willenberg. Yay. Bruce Valley. Yay. The yeas have it four to two. Thank you guys for coming in today. We greatly appreciate it. Again, I would like to thank Evergy's representatives for working so hard. Um, as a private citizen, I will be encouraging my um, council representative to approve. Thank you. And then as for the denial, you have seven days to issue an appeal to the Wichita City Council. Okay, I think we're ready for project HPC 2023-0014-124. Okay, okay, so the consent agenda will be at the end. Okay, that's good to know. All right, thank you. All right, this is case number HPC 2023-0024. The applicant has four requests on a property zone CBD central business district. One seven foot by seven foot aluminum sign on the north facade. One seven and a half foot by seven foot one inch aluminum acrylic sign on the west elevation. And uh, there is a typo in this report. Um, as you can see in the um, in the supplemental material that was provided, um, it is not one foot seven inches by 21 feet. It is two foot eight inches by eight foot one inches aluminum acrylic sign on the canopy and this is on the east elevation and then one two foot by two foot non-illuminated plaque on the building's east elevation and this is located at 105 south broadway avenue the subject site is currently developed with a vacant building that is currently being renovated into a hotel paul could we please go to the um uh the uh actually i'll just go through the photos here um Next slide, please. Oh, this is looking north away from the site. Next slide, please. This is looking west towards the site. Next slide, please. And this is looking east away from the site. Next slide, please. So uh, this is a diagram of all of the signs that are going to be, that they're proposing to install on the historic Brown building. Next slide, please. The first sign, known as E01 on the sign permit, will be situated approximately 130 feet off the ground near the top of the building. It will be installed onto the new addition of the north facade. The proposed cabinet sign will measure seven feet by seven feet, will be made of, a, of aluminum and will be internally illuminated. It will also read AC Hotel Marriott in white letters with a gray background. Next slide, please. The second sign, oh, there's a close-up of the, um, the proposed signage. Next slide, please. The second sign known as E02 on the sign permit will be installed on the first floor storefront windows on the west elevation. It will also read AC Hotel Marriott in white letters with a gray background and be in internally illuminated. The proposed sign will measure seven and a half feet by seven foot one and a half inches and will be made of acrylic. The sign will be secured to plywood and will not penetrate the facade. Uh, next slide, please. And this is a close-up of the proposed signage for E02. Uh, the third signage, um, known as E04 in the sign permit, will also read AC Hotel Wichita in white letters. Next slide, please. So uh, I apologize if this is a little bit hard to see. Um, so this will measure, uh, as you can see that they provided in their materials, it will measure two feet, eight inches by eight foot, one inches and read AC Hotel Wichita in white letters. The bottom of the sign will be 10 foot feet, five inches off the ground. And the acrylic and aluminum sign will be attached to the existing canopy on the east elevation. 
the illuminated sign will be installed using a threaded rod. The fourth sign, next slide, please. Uh, this is the uh, two foot eight inch by eight foot one inch sign that they are proposing on the canopy. Next slide, please. Uh, the fourth sign known as E05 on the sign permit will measure nearly two feet by two feet. It is non-illuminated aluminum plaque that reads AC Hotels Marriott and will be flush with the stone wall. The following paragraphs are excerpts from the National Register of Historic Places nomination file for the Brown Building. The Brown Building is nominated to the National Register of Historic Places under Criterion C for architecture as an excellent example of the commercial style with classical revival ornament. It also has a significant construction history designed to be expanded upward with additional stories. The building was designed by one of Wichita's leading architectural firms and built by one of the city's largest construction companies. It stands today as a reminder of Wichita's downtown growth of the early 1900s. The Brown Building retains a significant level of integrity. This two-story base has been restored following the Secretary of the Interior Standards to present a storefront with a historic appearance. The building retains its high quality of materials of Carthage Bedford stone trim, brick and marble, molded plaster, and polished brass. A little bit of history on this building. The, uh, it was built at the southwest corner of Douglas and Broadway and was constructed as an architectural mate to the 14-story Union National Bank on the southeast corner of the same intersection, also known as the Ambassador Hotel. Construction of the six-story Brown Building began in July of 1926, and it was designed by the well-known architectural firm of Sch Schmidt, Boucher, and Overend uh, designed the building, and the George Seedoff Construction Company served as its contractor. The office tower was named for Charles S. Brown, father of George Brown, owner of the lots on which it stood. Just a little bit of case history. In 2019 and 2020, planning staff administratively approved the changes associated with the historic tax credit projects on site. This was HPC 2019-0049 and HPC 2020-0007. These historic tax credit historic tax credit projects were approved by the National Park Service and the Kansas SHPO. Based upon the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, staff recommends approval of the application. The proposed signage follows standards 9 and 10. This signage, it is staff's opinion that this signage will be installed in a manner that it does not damage the building and can be repaired if the signage is removed. It is staff's opinion that the proposed signage does not obscure or damage any of the building's character defining features. And with that, I will stand for questions. The seven foot by seven foot sign, and it's gonna be up high, way up high. Is it gonna be on the roof? Or? So yeah, I can show you where it's gonna be. Paul, could we please go to where it says looking south towards site? So it'll actually be way up here. You can't even see it on the uh, on the slide, but it'll be way at the top here. So it, see this addition here? Yeah, it's on the top of that. Yes. Okay. But it's like a blade sign almost up there, mounted on the side. Yes. Well, Jutting it's a out. Full sign. Yeah. So it's best visible east and west, headed down Douglas. That's correct. Cool. I have a question just on the uh, diagram that I can't pull it up big enough to really see what it is. But on the full west elevation, there's some little lines down to the four top windows, and I cannot read what it's telling us. Um, which which slide is this, Claire? It's full west elevation, I believe. And it's not where the signage is going as much, but there's a side view off to the right. And there are little lines pointing to the four top windows. And I've tried blowing it up. It just gets fuzzy. It almost looked like they're talking about, I can't tell. Oh, 
Okay, I'm gonna go uh, see if I can. It's the west elevation, not the north. Right. There it is. I was curious what that was. What it was referring to. It Very says new aluminum windows to match replacement windows on north and east facades. Okay, so that's not part not of part what of, we're looking at. It's not part of what we're looking at today. Okay, I was afraid. Okay, sounds good. Thank you for the clarification. This sign is under the, the like a, a porta cashier or whatever we would call it there? Yes, so I, to be quite honest, it's technically on the adjacent property, but it's attached to the historic building. So I figure we would review it because it's better to review it and then, then not review it. Thank you. Yep. It seems like a lot of signs, but it is a big area. It's a pretty huge building. I love the sign on the east side. I think that's super cool. Good. I'm just delighted they're taking care of the building or will be. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, we need a motion to approve the staff recommendation for HPC 2023-00124, and that is to approve the application. Does the applicant, sorry, moves. go ahead. Rally so moves. The seconds. Here. Hear from the applicant before the motion. So it's been moved. Do we have a second? It's been moved and seconded to approve the staff recommendation. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6-0. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, you too. Okay, Christina, you want to cover uh, 129? Uh, yes, yeah, so HBC 2023 uh, 00129 has been withdrawn by the applicant at this time. Thank you. Okay, we're going to backtrack um, the agenda. Uh, Next item will be unfinished business, and that would be an update for the uh, on the design guidelines. Roll down. Okay. So I'm currently working with uh, Bob Potter and Director Wadel on creating a table that shows uh, the discrepancies between what was approved by the Historic Preservation Board and what is allowed by the Unified Zoning Code. So we are working on whether this requires a change of the zoning code or whether the planning department staff is going to submit their own recommendations um, based on the recommendations from the Historic Preservation Board, but also submit their own recommendations to the Wichita City Council to finalize the revisions to the Old Town Guidelines. What, uh, what's our timeline on that? Um, within the next few weeks. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have five items on the uh, consent agenda. Christina, would you please um, write a summary? Yes, so first we have HPC 2023-00116. This is in the Park Place Fairview Historic District. They are replacing the asphalt shingle roof in kind. 
Uh, same goes for 1425 North Park Place. And then for HPC 2023-00133, they are replacing the asphalt shingle roof on kind on the garage of 1433 North Park Place. Uh, HPC 2023-00134, they are replacing the asphalt shingle roof and kind at 1117 North Bidding. And at, for HPC 2023-00135 for the Eaton Hotel, they are repairing, they are essentially repairing the, uh, t uh, the original mosaic tile floors. And this is located at 505 East Douglas. And with that, I will stand for questions. If there are no questions, then I get a motion to approve the consent agenda. Willenberg, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead, Claire. Willenberg moves to uh, approve the consent agenda as presented. Engel seconds. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda as presented. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The motion carries 6 0. And with that, folks, I think we've concluded today's business. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Rally moved. I second it. It moved and seconded. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.